Hey guys, Valor Swanson here again. Uh, this is our second episode of customer experience in the cloud. I am live. There's no five second delay here, guys. So if something goes awry, then uh, I'll just try to work my way back. But I've got 10 to 15 minutes to talk to you about various topics um, and we'll be coming live streaming every week um, and uh, to, to basically explore different things related to contact centers, customer experience and agent experience and emerging technologies, uh, processes, uh, issues, best practices related to, to managing your people and your management team, in fact, um, and, and what's going on with different industry trends. <clears throat> Last week, we talked uh, a little bit about, you know, some of the issues with going to the cloud. And there was a few factoids that I, that I gave there related to that. So it'd be good if you, if you want to understand exactly what we, we shared with you guys. Uh, you can go back into a recorded um, a live stream that happened last week. Uh, but today uh, we're going to be talking about ain't proud of half the cloud. So, so what does that mean? And 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 talk. And I've got a special guest today, uh, uh, Andy Bird, who's going to be joining us here in a second, uh, who's going to take us through a little bit of of what it is to kind of go half a on going to the cloud. And so, let me just start off with a little a little story, a little bit of a little bit of background here. So, uh, been in contact centers uh, since 1989 uh, on the phones. Then back in uh, 2006, seven, eight, I was uh, running 21, 23 contact centers for a company called Comcast in the U.S. Came over to the U.K. I've been doing customer service, customer experience, agent experience, consulting. Uh, now for the first 13 years, uh, operational integration, merging technologies, you name it, globally. And now currently work for life size and we're trying to share with the world the best ways to kind of go forward on these things. Um, but with that said, uh, what's interesting is that when you're at a bar barbecue or your family, you know, um, game night or whatever it might be, you're at the bank, wherever you are, and you're in, you're in the industry, like you folks here are listening are in the industry and people say, what do you do? Oh, I'm in customer service. Uh, Oh yeah. So what exactly do you, oh, well, you know, I, you know, help ensure that customers, you know, they get the, Get things that they need when they when they contact the business and stuff. Oh, so you're like you're like an agent, and uh, and a little a little bit of ego kicks in, and I'm like ah no, you know I'm I'm like a call center director or a VP of customer care and or whatever else pops in my head. But then they still have this blank look on their face because the point is is that they really don't understand the complexity associated with running contact centers, the people, the processes, and very uh, not not very importantly, but very important these days is the associated technologies that help enable that. So that's why we're talking about cloud because that's where everything is going based on the current environment we're in. And we need to be able to embrace this, remove the fear factor, take succinct steps, do it in a very, um, in a prudent way that doesn't, uh, you know, basically break the bank or, or is brand toxic and allows your customers to have the best experience and allows your agents to have the best experience. So, Andy's going to come on board. He's going to pop in here any second. I'm going to have him introduce himself. Hey, Andy, how, how are you? Welcome. Hey, Valor. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Okay. So, Andy, can you tell the world a little bit about uh, what do you do? What, what, what is your role? So, I get the privilege of running product management for LifeSize for the CCAS side of the house. So, for all the things that you just talked about and mentioned, uh, we just enable that via technology and delightful products that uh, make that happen. Okay, cool, cool. And, and believe me, that was just the tip, of the tip of the needle on top of the iceberg of all the things that Andy knows. So <laughs> he'll be he'll be visiting us again, believe me. You give me too much credit, buddy, but thank <laughs> you. Seriously. I mean, Andy takes me to the deep end of the pool sometimes when these conversations. It, so it's fun watching you swim. I love watching the dog paddle. It works. <laughs> exactly. So um, what I what I said earlier was, um, you know, you know, what 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 is it that we do, and, and um, as it relates to you know people, process, and technology, and I was I was I was getting to the point of that I just gave up and said surrendered. To, look, my job is just I help people be nice to each other. That, that's yeah. our our role. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, right, Andy? Just yeah. that's what we're doing, right? Because interactions matter, and they matter more now than they have you know in previous years. The last nine months have told us that. Every interaction, including this one, matters a great deal to us because they're fewer and farther between. Absolutely, and 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 you know, just the video medium becoming ubiquitous is is really, I think, helping people you know be closer because you've got a seventy percent communication rate happening with just the body language, um, and and we're just kind of just getting into that world where businesses are starting to utilize video for that purpose. Yeah, and 
the cloud, as we talked about before, is the platform to potentially do that, as well as a bunch of other cool things that you know we can talk forever about, I'm sure, Andy. But let me go back into the mode of like I used to be, which is, uh, you know, I used to run contact centers. So I'm the call center director, VP of customer care, whatever it is. And then, you know, the CFO is like, oh, you know, I heard you were on that. You know, you were listening to some webinar. You went to some seminar about cloud. And um, you know, don't don't come to me with some, you know, I'm not giving you a budget for a cloud because, you know, you're not going to. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna tear down our business with some hokey, crazy idea that you have. Uh, and then uh, they went and saw something and then they come to us, uh, you know, us call center folks and they're scratching their head and they're like, hey, um, so Father, um, can we do like a half a cloud? Can, you, can, we, kind of, can we just kind of wing it? <laughs> so what, what, what it would, me, I'd be like, ah, uh, I'd go to you, Andy. And what, what, would, what, what would you say to something like that? Well, the, the first thing you have to do is we have to define this whole idea of what is a cloud, right? Mm -hmm. because is that that gets really convoluted. Lots of people claim cloud and they don't necessarily have cloud. So you've got you've got various things that are going on, right? And and you have to start with the actual service itself and what you're trying to accomplish. And so you could have dedicated hosted, you could have shared hosted, you could have hybrid hosted, but really you want to look for the things that are important to you. So do you have a hierarchical structure? Are you sharing data with anyone else? Is it multi-tenant? And when you look at a real, like a full blown cloud, I guess is the best way to put it. Mm. You have all those things. You have hierarchy. You, you, you're able from a technology stack to administer your own platform and administer platforms underneath you as if they were on-prem. But there is, you're, you're exactly right. There's almost this fear, there's this, this, this worry that going to the cloud somehow gives up your rights mm -hmm. and, and changes things. And I, and I, I know, you know, you, you're going to want to talk about this one. I bet, I bet in your back pocket, you've got a slide on this, in fact, right? <laughs> the buying power on, on this, this sort of thing. But that's part of it. And, and so customers do different things when it comes to from a cloud perspective. And that can be either the segmentation of the business, yep. where part of the business is going on the cloud. You take technology and people and you move them that way, all yep. the way to looking at different types of cloud as they get more comfortable with it, mm -hmm. um, maintaining all those things, because you're going to have your list, right? You have security, you have access, you have control, you want those things to be in order. And so you have to look at that. But then when you look at the buying decision, like you've shown here, yep. this this is really where it comes down to because it's usually an individual's subjective experience of what they've had in the past, what they've been trained on yeah. to know where they need to go next. So, so, so it's paradoxically, you get more control. You have the ability to scale up, scale down, scale out, scale in. Uh, you get to have remote agents to work anywhere. Um, you, you're not having to log around any tin that you've invested some, you know, all kinds of CapEx into potentially. Um, or you can go into a multi-year cloud uh, contract, potentially uh, maybe an annual renewal type of contract uh, or a subscription-based one, uh, which is, for example, if you have um, peaks and troughs in your contact center, then you just get additional licenses and you just instantly just basically the agent logs into a, um, a screen somewhere uh, to be able to handle those, those additional Christmas calls that are happening, those pre-Christmas shopping calls. And then finally, and I, I don't know if this is actually a thing, but I, I'm sure somebody out there is doing a pay-as-you-go contact center service. But the, but the bottom line is, and I'm sure you'd agree, as we were talking about here, the, the further you go into not having 10 you know, in your building somewhere, underneath your desk, in a closet with a bunch of, you know, cat five everywhere, that right. the risk is reduced, right? Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. But but it's not always perceived that way, right? So mm. we have a lot of people who in, in the IT space who they've been trained to manage, maintain, and control that sort of area. And so when they give that up to the cloud, it's it's almost like they're giving up some of the history that they've had to do that. When, when what you're talking about here are the advantages as you move towards the cloud. You know, uh, you know, on my on my vlog the other day, I was talking about bananas, right? And how bananas yeah. inspire the tin. And I love the fact that you used the word tin. What a great way of, of talking about it. But when you've got stuff in a rack, whether it's at a, at a hosted environment or you've mm -hmm. got it on-prem, it's yeah. tin. You're paying for tin and those tins will rust and expire at some point in time. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I think last time I shared that, I, I, I'm not sure where, I can't remember where it was, but 
I don't know if it was Gartner or Forrester, one of those guys, one of those guys that know everybody, know everything. It was about 50% of all uh, contact centers out there on the planet are basically going to be going to cloud uh, by the year 2020. I'm sorry, two th yeah, 2022. Um, so everybody is making a mad dash here. So if you're on this, you know, on this slide continuum here, you know, that's you crying right there. If you're and your boss is quite upset with you that you didn't get on the bandwagon. And, and when I say bandwagon, I'm, this is the correct bandwagon here. Uh, or you could be uh, on the uh, low risk end of the things, quite happy, and then your boss is wearing some cool sunglasses. And- uh, <laughs> You mean like those? No, but the, the, the idea, talk to them about a little bit why it's low risk though, because you're not investing in the tin, right? Yeah. You are, you are, you are uh, you, utilizing and purposing someone else's investment in that tin yeah. and not taking on that full burden. And that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, and when we spoke before, you, you know, you were talking about bananas and then you were talking about different types of cloud. And can you, I was, you know, I kind of, you kind of lost because when you got talking about bananas, you got way too technical for me. So, right. right. Well, you know, I always say Valor, everybody pills bananas wrong. So you should right. pull them from the bottom uh, upwards. But yeah, the, the idea is there, there's multiple types of clouds and, and, yeah. and the term is used too synonymously with just the fact that I don't have it on prem. Mm. And that is not always a cloud. If if I'm renting a data center and I'm putting stuff into that data center, that's not really a cloud. I'm actually just being served from another location, right? right. So I'm hosting my stuff. Mm. Cloud really, when, when you get down into the nitty gritty, gritty of it, cloud is shared, right? So I'm either sharing computing, I'm sharing storage, I'm sharing mm. something so that I'm obfuscating the cost and, and, and I always say this, it's really not SaaS unless it's on pass, right? So meaning the platform as a service, which is different from infrastructure as a service, yeah. is, is insofar as you've got operating systems and actual software running on it. Now I put the additional software, my customized software on top of that pass. Now I'm being served in such a way that I can administer that. I can make it sure that I can tenetize that and I can segment the data because that's really where the security risk comes in, right? Is being able to segment, segment it that way. So just because you're doing hosted yourself doesn't mean it's the cloud. And that's that's where you get into the, some of the struggle with half the cloud is people go, yeah, I've got a data center down the street. It's still subject to all the things, you know, that, that any building uh, with infrastructure could be subject to, where usually the cloud, if you're going with one of the big ones, uh -huh. right, it's spread and, and my risk is lower, much, much lower. So, 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 so back to the original question that the CFO came marching in and said, hey, I got an idea, let's do half a cloud. I mean, can I appease him by saying, okay, well, we're not going to do like the half thing and half prim and half, the, but, but c can I bring cloud in then and do a team? maybe a building, a location, and then kind of work my way like a bullseye uh, yeah. you know, as, as, a, as a way to pretend that's a half a cloud to tell him. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's always different ways that you can migrate into it. And what you just described is a, is a migration strategy. So right. it's, it's, it's what components it, that I'm utilizing today are costing me the most, right? To go back to your slide, it, which ones are costing me the most that I have to stay on top of on a regular basis, stay persistent with, can I move some of those services in into a way that is deferred outside of my cost measures? And if I can move those into the cloud, and then I could even you go to your direction where you take a segment of people that are operating mm -hmm. off of that service and or software, and you segment them and you grow it from there. There's always this this idea that the wonderful thing about cloud is you always get the almost try before you buy, or at least you you can test it out much much easier because subscription-based uh, implementations like that are far yeah. better than making a full-blown investment to going in there. So the, the best way to do half a cloud is get on the cloud, get started yeah. somewhere on the cloud. Yeah, so it's, it's not proof of concept anymore, it's proof of value and it's a way to get going and, and not take any risk and, and, and really re realize that you are reducing the risk to your business. And we could go into all of the things that can happen within the cloud environment, you know, the integrations, the APIs and all that, but you know, that's gonna be for a different show because I'm getting the 12 minute warning here. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm sure Andy and I could talk all day. In fact, we have a separate little thing, me and him, he, he and I do called uh, Falcon and the Bird, but we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, uh, so, so hey guys, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you, uh, Andy, for joining us today. Um, 
I'm sure you'll be joining us again anytime we get a little technical because, you know, I'm an operations guy. I'm a CX guy, EX guy and uh, contact center guy. So, you know, it's the, it's the smart people that come in. Um, where, where are you, Andy? Which, which side of the screen are you on? Where <laughs> smart people that come in and, and help uh, us. Basically, at the end of the day, if Andy came in and said, Valor, you know, I have a hamster in the wheel in the cloud. And I'm like, okay, well, is it going to make my customers happy? Is it going to make my agents happy? Is it going to reduce my cost of serve? Is it going to generate more revenue? I will say yes. And so right now that hamster in the wheel is the cloud. And we're going to take you through a series of discussions about that over the next um, few weeks. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about how uh, only turkeys send their agents to the office to work. So I'm, I'm working out, you know, how I'm going to pull all that together. But it's going to be about basically the emotive aspects of working from home and, and how we can care for that. And then after that, we'll be talking about turn that damn camera on. Uh, and so we'll have different talking about different use cases for uh, video in the contact center. Yes, it's kind of like, oh, video in the contact center. Yes, yes, now is the time. And uh, then after that, we're going to have the Christmas special, which is that, uh, and uh, Andy, I think you might need to join us on that one. Um, that's uh, AI and video had a baby. Ooh, wow. That good. I'll wear my Santa hat for that one. Yeah, for sure. So, guys, listen, uh, we're out of time. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. If you have any comments, questions, thoughts, ideas, put, put them in the uh, comment box or the thing on the bottom, and uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. And, again, remember, uh, life size your life. So, thank you. <laughs>